So you can see I have four steps listed here that we typically use to solve linear equations. The first one is to simplify each side of the equation. The second one is to get all the variable terms to one side of an equation. The third is to undo addition or subtraction on the variable side. And the fourth one is to undo multiplication or division on the variable side. What I'm going to take you through in this video is I'm going to start out with real simple equations that require maybe a step or two, and then we're going to work our way up to equations that take all four of these steps to solve. So in my first example, I have negative 3x is equal to 15. Well, this is a linear equation, and what we're trying to find when we're solving this equation is we're trying to find the value of x that is going to make this equation a true statement. For a simple equation like this, you might be able to look at the variable and guess and check to figure out the solution, but I'm going to encourage you to learn these steps because later on it's going to get more complicated. We're going to need these steps to solve the equation. So for this particular equation, all I'm going to need to do is step four, which is to undo multiplication or division on the variable side. I know that I'm going to only need to use step four because I look at the variable side, which now is the left side of the equation, and I see here that I have a negative three times x. Well, I need to undo or get rid of the multiplication by negative three. To undo this multiplication, I'm going to divide by negative three. Now when we solve equations, whatever we do to one side of the equal sign, we need to do the same thing to the other. So since I divided this side by negative three, I'm going to go to the other side and divide that side by negative three. Now let's take a look. If I take a negative three divided by a negative three, that is going to give me a positive one, or in this case, a positive one x. Well, the simplest way to write one x is just to write x. So what I did here by dividing this side by negative three is that I've isolated my variable on the left side. Once x is all alone, it's going to be very easy to identify the value that it needs to be to make this equation a true statement. Let's look at the right side now. If I take a positive 15 divided by a negative 3, I'm going to get a negative 5. And you can see that once I have the variable isolated, now it's really easy to see what x is supposed to equal to make this a true statement. x needs to be negative 5. And the next example I'm going to show you is going to require two steps to solve. You notice if I look at the variable side of my equation here, which is the left side, it's the variable side because of course it has the variable on it, I have two things going on. I have this addition of 7, and I also have this division by 2. Well, I need to get rid of both of these things, and to do that I want to follow a specific order, and that order is this. I want to undo addition or subtraction, and then I want to undo the multiplication or division. So the first thing I'm going to look to get rid of is this addition of 7 on the left side. Well, to get rid of the addition of 7, I'm going to subtract 7. Notice whatever I do to one side of the equation, I always do the same thing to the other. So after I subtract 7 on this left side, well, 7 minus 7 is going to give me 0. So those are essentially going to drop out. And all I'm going to have left on this left side is this x divided by 2. So those are essentially gone. On the left side, I'm going to bring down this x divided by 2. On the right side, I have 17 minus 7, which is going to give me 10. Notice I simplified my equation now, and I've made it easier to see what my solution might be. I just have one more thing to undo here. I have x divided by 2 on this left side, so I need to undo that division by 2. Well, to undo the division of 2, I'm going to multiply by 2. Since this problem is set up more or less like a fraction, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this multiplication by 2. I'm going to write the multiplication, but I'm going to write this 2 as a fraction. So to write that 2 as a fraction, I'm going to write it as 2 over 1. Now I have to do the same thing to the right side. On this side, I don't want to write that as 2 over 1, though. Since I'm not dealing with any fractions on this side, I'm just going to write multiply by 2. Okay, so on the left side, I'll have 2 times x will give me 2x. In the bottom, I'll have 1 times 2 gives me 2. On the right side, 10 times 2 is going to give me 20. You'll notice I have exactly what I had in the first example that I showed you. I basically have 2x divided by 2. Well, 2 divided by 2 is going to give me 1, or just 1x left over. So I'm going to have an x on the left side. And on the right side, I'm going to have 20. 